Welcome to Sim TV. My name is Apollo Vandenberg, and today we're going to talk about setting up a basic transient analysis. So today's objective is to understand the basics of a transient or time varying analysis. Uh, we're actually going to walk through some of the assumptions for setting up something along the lines of this image here where uh, there's a, a block undergoing some heat load and we want to see how the, the temperature and flow field develops over time. So first thing with transient analyses are the boundary conditions. Um, many models, we have the ability to assume that the conditions are steady state. Um, what the objective is is to understand how those assumptions develop over time or over a specific duration uh, of time um, within the, the, the domain itself. Um, if there are times where you have a, a condition or a load that will vary with respect to time, we can input that as well. So under the boundary condition dialog itself, you'll see that there's the ability to switch from steady state to transient. Uh, as we go into transient, you'll have a handful of different variation methods for the boundary conditions. One of the most frequently used variations is piecewise linear, where we can set up a, a table dictating how that condition varies with respect to time. So, you know, if it's like an electronics chassis, we might say that there's a, a duty cycle for the heat load um, or, or, you know, some time varying wind loading. Um, so you can set time equals zero, there's, you know, a specific condition, and then as time evolves, um, you know, we can get essentially a load curve that you can plot out and, and verify on. With transient analyses, initial conditions are, are very important as well. Um, it's useful for dictating what the, the model is doing at time equals zero or you know, at the, the beginning of the computation. Uh, so if we wanted to represent that an electronics chassis was a, you know, in a cold soak or, or even a heat soak environment, um, we could initialize all of the volumes to a specific temperature and then watch how any heat loading or the flow field itself will alter over a period of time the actual temperatures in the model. Looking at the, the solver settings, this is actually one of the more important details with transient analyses. Uh, first is the time step size. This allows us to dictate uh, time in seconds between each global step or global iteration. Um, this will essentially control our, our time accuracy or our time fidelity um, as we evolve through the solution. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about this in the next slide. Uh, the stop time isn't used as frequently, um, but essentially it allows us to specify uh, a time at which we want the analysis to stop. Um, by default, this has a, a value of negative one to ignore this field. Um, but if it is populated between the stop time itself and the iterations to run or time steps to run, uh, whichever one comes first will uh, allow for the analysis to stop at that point. With inner iterations, the, this is actually, uh, you know, the number of times we do each global time step. So by default, we have that set to a value of 10. Typically, we can use a value somewhere between 5 and 10. Um, this allows us to, to calculate each global time step uh, a few times to make sure that we have the best possible solution before progressing on to the next global time step. So to kind of outline a little bit, uh, a rule of thumb with the, the time step size. So, you know, a guideline is pretty much taking uh, about 1 20th of the residence time of your domain. So for something simple like a, a pipe or a straight channel, if it was you know, about two meters in length and we had a velocity of you know, six meters per second, uh, you know, essentially the, our time step size that we would use uh, that you know, one twentieth of the total residence time would be, uh, you know, right around uh, 0.016 seconds. Um, now the switch to this is if we had some sort of flow obstruction, um, you know, we might want to actually take a smaller uh, domain and kind of look at that as the critical area to assess what the the time step size should be to capture how the physics evolves through a constriction point. Uh, so in a case like this. You know, now we're using a, a smaller time step size to account for the increased, uh, you know, gradients within the domain. Um, so let's take a peek at, at, a, at a quick example. 
So here what we have is, uh, as I, I mentioned, it's just a block that has some constant heat loads and uh, we're gonna watch how it heats up over time. So these are the type of animations that we can produce and, and results that we can get out of the model. So as the heat you know, develops in the domain, um, you can actually see on the other frame that the, the velocity flow, uh, profile starts developing and um, you know, evolving over time. So um, if you have any questions with this, feel free to let us know, uh, contact, support, or, or the Sim Squad. Thanks.